Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is gonna be another update on our house situation. And I'm sure most of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, but if for some reason you don't, I'm gonna link the main video down below where I was sharing with you guys what my fiance Mark and I had been going through when we purchased a house that had a very, very big flooding problem and a black mold problem that was withheld from us by the sellers. And there was like all of this bullshit that went down with the inspector. I know a lot of people didn't watch the video all the way through, so a lot of people didn't get to the shadiness with the inspector, but there was a bunch of stuff going on with that. So if you do decide to watch the video, make sure you watch it all the way through so you understand the situation to its fullest capacity because I think that, you know, a lot of people didn't watch the whole thing, so some of the information is confusing, but I do understand it's a very long video. But anyways, today I wanted to talk to you guys about one of the most frustrating things about what Mark and I had been going through involving the legal side of things. And I wanted to share this with you guys because, well, first of all, my video about our house blew up and it, it reached more people than I expected that it would. I wanted more people to see it, but I didn't think that almost a million people at this point like have seen that video and I'm still just amazed and blown away by it. And because of that, I want you guys to get these updates and to hear everything that's going on. And one of the main things that you guys said that we should do and that you wanted to see us do was to sue the sellers. So I'm gonna be talking about that in this video and then I'm also gonna be letting you guys know kind of like where we're at with everything right now because if you guys have kept up to date so far, you know that it's a process and it's something we're still currently. So things have been good in that way. I really wanna do a video talking to you guys about the lasting effects. We're having certain symptoms that are PTSD-like. So it's there's been a lot. So I definitely wanna do a video about the lasting effects of the situation and just everything that's gone on. But today we're gonna heavily focus on the legal side of things and Mark actually wrote me down notes and I got it on this piece of paper because I don't want to forget anything but before I get into this and before I share this with you guys I just ask that you guys hear me out throughout the entire video I want you guys to understand why we made the decision that we did I have a sinking suspicion that uh, the sellers have probably seen my video I hope they did I'd be really surprised if they didn't at this point because I come from a very small town and the city of Siloam and everybody on the board knows about it you know what I mean and it's just like this big thing so I have the sinking suspicion that they've seen the video and I really hope that they watch this one I don't think that they have a lot of sympathy or empathy inside of them for them to be able to actually give two shits about how Mark and I feel but I really do hope that they've been watching because they I don't think that they have the ability to understand what they put us through. Not only the most important thing, uh, most likely killing our cats, but the lasting effects of this. Like it is August, 2020. It's been two years now officially. We actually two years ago closed on the house and there's been a lot that's gone on and it wasn't just a, you know, you get a situation and your house floods sometimes. It caused a lot of problems for us. And this is one of the really, really big stressors. And that was the, lawsuit situation and I want the sellers to know that a lot of people know what they did and a lot of lawyers know what they did they know they know everything and I want them to know that so hopefully they see this video let's all cross our fingers that they see it everybody leave that emoji down below so I'm really nervous to do this I don't know why as you guys can see this stuff about the house it still gives me so much anxiety makes me want to cry. It makes me feel very frustrated. Even though we're in a much better living situation, we're still living with this problem. It's very hard to talk about. I want to talk about it, but it's hard. So just bear with me. I might be a jumbled mess. I might ramble a lot like I just did for six minutes. It might be long, but we're going to we're gonna get into it. So the first thing I'm gonna say is that we have had appointments with three different lawyers. I'm gonna go into great detail with every single thing that we were told and all of the legal advice that we were given, what was different from this lawyer to that lawyer. But I really want you guys to know we pursued this heavily. Going and speaking to a lawyer and getting together all this information and talking about this all the time, 
is the hardest thing. It's not fun, it really sucks, but we really wanted justice to be served. It wasn't so much about getting money out of it, it was about the people that did this to us, getting what they deserved and being able to share with the world or whoever chooses to listen that you can get justice if you're in a situation like ours. Like that was my main thing. I wanted to show people, because there's been a lot of people that have commented on my video being in similar situations and I wanted to show them that you can get justice for it, you know what I mean? That was my main thing. Because of that, we chose to meet with lawyer after lawyer after lawyer to see all of our options. And the first lawyer appointment that we had was long before I ever even posted that video. And it was in July of 2019. We hadn't even owned the house for a year yet. And at this point, we had experienced numerous um, occasions of flooding. We didn't buy a house thinking we were gonna get wrapped up in a legal situation. That's just not at all what we thought was going to happen. The first lawyer appointment that we had was kind of a disappointing one. He said that we had a case against the seller. It was clear that they had lied, that they had committed fraud, which is what all the comments you guys have left me had said. And I don't think a lot of you guys knew that prior to even me doing this video, we had already met with a lawyer before. We had actually met with two lawyers. This lawyer said that we did have a case against the seller. They obviously committed fraud, but that we didn't have a case against the realtor because there was no, like, without a shadow of a doubt evidence that she knew about it. Like it appeared that she did, but there was no evidence that could be proven in court that this realtor knew about it. So we didn't have a case against her. And he said that we didn't have a case against the inspector because most inspectors have something in their, like their paperwork that basically like means that if you sue them, you're just gonna get back what you paid them for. So when you hire an inspector, you pay for that inspector. We paid like 200 or something like that. So he said, if you sued him, that's all you're gonna get back. So you're gonna be spending thousands and thousands of dollars to sue to get hardly anything back. At the end of the day, we are already being heavily inconvenienced and that would just, at the time when we were told that, it was like, this is just gonna be an even more inconvenient situation for, you know, no reason. At this time in July, we did not have money for this retainer and we did not know how we would get it. And even if we did, he didn't think that the seller would even be able to pay us anything because it appeared as though she didn't have a job where she would just have a lot of money sitting around and she could just file bankruptcy. And if she filed bankruptcy, she could just get out of the situation. So we kind of felt disappointed after that lawyer appointment. We didn't have thousands of dollars at the time to give this lawyer. And we didn't know at that time that we were gonna end up looking at our options to get rid of the house. At that point with the first lawyer appointment, we thought that there was a chance that we could fix everything ourselves and maybe repair it, but we wanted the sellers to pay for that because this was their problem. This was something that they put in someone else's lap and they were the ones that lived here for years as this problem was getting worse and worse and worse they should have to pay for it. But the issue was, is that they didn't know if we would even be able to get a dime out of them to even repair any of the damages. So we had to like sit on that with, how are we gonna get this thousands of dollar retainer and paying all of this money for a maybe? Like we had never been in this situation before, ever in a million years. Most of us haven't. Most of us don't really know what to expect in a situation like this. We just so happen to get wrapped up in a situation that we didn't know a lot about or how really to get out of and now we're sitting there with holy shit we're gonna have to put out so much money and the reason why we're even doing this to begin with is because we don't have the money to fix the problem that you lied to us about like if you didn't lie about it someone would have bought this house that could have actually had the money to fix that but instead you lied about what the problem was and said there was no flooding that there was no mold that there was none of that stuff and now we have this big problem that we can't afford so for a while we were like okay we might as well well, save that money we were gonna use towards that lawyer and put it into fixing the problem. We kept trying every single thing. I'm gonna save you guys all those details. It's all in my first video. So that is when we decided to get a second opinion and to meet up with another lawyer in around January, February. We met with this one a couple times because originally he thought that there was something that we could do. He said the same thing about the realtor inspector that the first lawyer said. So we got, you know, that confirmed for us that going after them wasn't gonna be something that would be worth it. And his main issue with the seller, once again, like with the first lawyer, was that what if she didn't have any way to pay us? She could file bankruptcy. 
and we would never see a dime, but we would be out of all of this money. He's like, you will most likely win this case. You have all of this evidence. You've been doing everything that you should be doing by taking photos, videos. You have evidence galore and more for what they did wrong. But the problem is, is that once you win the lawsuit, there probably won't be any money for you to collect. So it'll say that you won, you'll have had the, you know, pat on the back, like, yeah, you won this, but you won't get shit. You'll be out of more money. And then you don't have any money to put into the house to fix it. And he recommended after we met with him the second time that we save our money that we would use to go to him and we put that back into the house. And that was the advice that we got with him. He also said we couldn't sue the city of Siloam Springs because they had sovereign immunity. So basically that means that they would have to like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's something to this effect, they would have to approve of themselves being sued. Like they would have to say like, yeah, that's fine, you can sue us, which, why the hell would they do that? And why they're able to do that, I have no idea. But he said we couldn't sue them. He said we couldn't sue the trucking business behind us because there would have to be proof that there was a law broken. And in order to get that, we would have to get someone from the city of Siloam to be able to prove that the trucking business broke a law, which they could not do. So that lawyer ended up setting up a round table meeting with everyone in his law firm, which is a really big deal. He said that everyone at the table collectively agreed that because the damages were upwards of 34 plus thousand dollars, and because there was all those little things preventing us from suing the realtor, the inspector, and the business and the city that it would not be worth pursuing because we probably, like I said, wouldn't collect anything. That was really disappointing. There are so many details of that. There were so many questions that I asked, but like I said, I don't want this video to be so long that nobody watches it. There were a million questions that were asked, like, can we come from this angle? Can we come from that angle? And it ended with disappointment. When we were gonna have that second lawyer appointment with him, that was obviously the first time we had a second meeting. The first one was very positive and he made me feel, he made us both feel like there was like a chance that, that this could work out in our favor. And we left the second one so disappointed. I cried the whole way home because I felt like, how can someone, do this to people and the law doesn't care. There's no way that you'll get justice from it. At the very least, they should go to jail for what they did. Something like if you're not, if they're, if we can't collect money off of them, they should go to jail. And I also happen to know, this is just a little bit of extra information for you. They like bought a boat. They literally bought a whole ass boat. They have this like really nice house. They bought a boat that actually we needed. We were the ones in the house that flooded. We needed your damn boat. They took thousands and thousands of dollars from this sale and put it into this nice house and they have the money to go and buy a boat. Meanwhile, the people that they screwed over are struggling and they're like knees deep in muddy waters of this stupid house and they're just going on and living their lives like normal and buying whatever they want to buy. And this is what pisses me off. They profited off this sale, giving them the ability to live in this house and to live their lives the way that they are. It, it, there's just so much about that that's so wrong. It's just frustrating. So I cried after that lawyer appointment. And after that one, that was going to be the last shot. It obviously ended up not being, but at the time, we left with, that's it. Like we got basically the same opinion from the first lawyer. They're professionals. They've been doing this for years and years and years. They don't want to take the case because we're basically, I mean, they would take it if we wanted to. They were actually advising us against it. And when you get, I know we've had a lot. If you guys watched the previous video, we've had a lot of professional advice that wasn't so professional. So that was one reason why it was a really big deal to get like a second opinion. And like, I feel like it's like that with everything guys, just keep this in mind. Don't ever go with the first anything. If you can learn anything from our story, don't go with the first anything. Look for your second option and then compare the two. Get more experience in the situation. That way you can weigh out the pros and the cons of both 
because you don't want to end up in a situation like us. So we left that really disappointed. And at the time when this was going on, I hadn't done any videos about it. I had talked about it here and there on my channel, but I was keeping it pretty private. I felt like nobody cared. I genuinely did. Like I had friends that wouldn't even check on me that I felt like didn't care. And it, was becoming like frustrating because we felt like so alone like we didn't want anyone to feel like they had to be there for us like who who wants to come around people that are sad all the time because they're in the situation you know what i mean like who wants that energy like people want to be around things that make them happy they don't want to be around people that are sad because they're in this awful situation so i totally get that but it was just really lonely um a lonely place to be in and so I wasn't talking about it I felt like no one really cared like I think I talked about it on Twitter but it never really seemed like that many people cared but we wanted to pursue legal action and I wasn't sure what was okay to talk about and what wasn't if we did do that like I didn't ever want to say too much or you know say how I really felt about the sellers and then like that somehow be used against me like I wouldn't I wanted to be very very diligent and careful with everything that I said and did you know I had have been known to do story times about situations before but this one was just too big of a thing for me to do that so I kept it private for a long time Mark and I were like embarrassed we were really really embarrassed of our living situation we felt so stupid for getting into it and it was just it was hard so as you guys know there's all this stuff that went down um, that led me to making the video that I made. So this is where we're at current times now. Like before I filmed that video, those were the only lawyer appointments that we had had. And you guys know everything that went on if you watch that video. I want you guys to know, I don't wanna cry. You guys inspired Mark and I and made us feel loved and cared about and gave us that extra push that we needed to try it one more time. I didn't want to disappoint anybody. Um, more than that, I didn't want the sellers to get away with this. It was so frustrating, like just just knowing that someone can do what they did and that they will go on and live their lives and, and do whatever they wanna do and there's no repercussions for that. And I happen to know some things that they have said about our situation and they don't care. They do not care. They don't have remorse. They don't. There are certain things in this situation that I can't put on the internet, but they don't care. Like I know things that they have said about us and there are things I wish I could say that I can't, but they don't care. And knowing that is enraging, knowing that there is a narrative being twisted to whoever in their life might come across my video and that they are acting as though they didn't do anything wrong and they are gaslighting and manipulating and pretending like this didn't happen and like it doesn't matter is the most frustrating thing. So all of the comments from you guys, you know, essentially begging us to sue them and to get justice, all the comments from people in situations like us that accompanied with the way that I know that those people are and the fact that they don't have remorse for anything just gave Mark and I that extra push to try one more time. They always say like third time's a charm, right? And we are like, let's try one more time. Let's meet up with another lawyer and let's talk to him. And this was a meeting where, oh my God, I left this meeting feeling so freaking positive. He suggested things that we didn't know. He knew things that the other lawyers didn't know. And this is a great example of why you need to meet with multiple people when it comes down to serious situations like purchasing a house or talking to lawyers. Meet with multiple ones. You can go back to the first one if you want, but meet with multiple ones so you can compare. Because he knew things and suggested things that the other lawyers did not. And he, he seemed very, very, very intelligent. And I left that meeting feeling like they're gonna get fucked. They're, they, like, they are going to get fucked for what they did. And this is gonna be a message that can be sent to everyone around the world or anyone who comes across my video, do not do this to people because you will get screwed. We felt excited, motivated, and at this time, like my video was, was being watched. It was being watched enough that I was like, I can use the money that I'm getting on this video 
to put down a retainer for this lawyer. So here's the things that the third lawyer said. He said we, just like the other two lawyers, we had an obvious case against the seller, but he also said that there was potential that we could sue the inspector for negligence because in the inspector's forms, it specifically said that he specialized in, in, in looking for flood damage. And now we didn't know what flood damage looked like but when you walked into this house, when the sellers lived there, there was obvious flood damage in the kitchen by the doors and on the cabinets. We didn't know that that was what that was from. We just thought it was old and cracked. He never noted those things as a problem. Not to mention, I can't remember if I told you guys this in my main video, but when Mark and I showed up to look at the house the first time with the inspector and to meet him and everything, he was talking to the owner of the home, the seller, and her son outside. And we sat in the car for like 10 to 15 minutes while they talked, waiting on them to get done because our realtor told us not to communicate with the seller. So we waited in the car on them to leave and to stop talking and it's just the fact that they were like talking for so long before we showed up and I don't know it's like I don't know if the sellers knew that he was gonna withhold information for them if it was something that was discussed if they knew each other I have no idea the one thing I do know is that there is a lot of lying and gaslighting coming from some people that lived in that house I don't know if they knew him personally but I found that to be really strange so anyways the lawyer said that we could probably pursue against the inspector and that inspectors, and none of the other lawyers told us this, but that the inspector had insurance. Cause in order for you to be an inspector in the state of Arkansas, you have to have at least a hundred thousand dollar insurance policy. That meant that we were looking at a case of it, getting at least a hundred thousand dollars. And what he also said that with the sellers that we could put a lien on their current property and basically what that would do is that would mean that if they ever went to sell their house we would get a certain amount out of that sale before they would even get a dime out of it so that was sounding really really positive more than we could have imagined but during our second meeting with this lawyer was when we found something very fucking disappointing and I want you guys to listen to this. This is very, very, very important. If you are going to hire an inspector to look at your house, you need to listen to this because this is something that we didn't know that ended up being the reason why we could not sue him and get and collect on his insurance. During the inspector's agreement, which you had to sign to have him inspect, he would not inspect unless you sign this paper, it says if you find any issues on the property that he inspected, you are required to contact him within 10 days of him inspecting the home so he can come back and re-inspect it and look for further issues. It also said that that was something that we had to do prior to pursuing legal action. We didn't know that and obviously we purchased the house in August of 2018. It was obviously way after 10 days of him inspecting our house the first time. The thing that was really fucked up about that too, really fucked up, and it really shows the shadiness to, to me personally in this inspector that that was even in his agreement, is that we didn't even own the home within 10 days of him inspecting it. They still owned it. So if you inspect the house, and we can't pursue legal action against you unless you we let you come back within 10 days of inspecting it the first time. How would we have known that there were any issues if we couldn't even go in the home? We didn't own it. How are we able to call you out for the shit that you missed? And that is something that I found to be just really shady that that was in, in that agreement. What should be in there should be something like within 10 days of you living inside of the home, something like that. But how can we find a problem after you inspect it if we don't even live there yet? Like there was no, like we were screwed from the beginning with that. There was no way on earth that we could have sued him. So because of that being in the inspector's paperwork, that made him immune from being sued. Even though he had $100,000 insurance because we didn't live in the home within 10 days of him, him, him inspecting it to be able to be like, you fucked this up, we couldn't sue him anymore. When you are purchasing a house, I cannot stress this to you enough, hire multiple 
inspectors. It's going to be expensive, but it is going to be worth it because they're probably going to have something exactly like that in their paperwork, meaning if they don't if they either don't find it or they happen to know the seller if you live in a small town like like we moved into, hire multiple inspectors. It's worth it to save your money before you purchase a house to do that. That is something that is so incredibly important because there can be things that could be missed and you don't wanna get in a situation like us where because of this tiny little freaking detail in there that we couldn't even get around if we had wanted to, made him immune from being sued. It's absolutely disgusting. It's disgusting that people can become inspectors and they can just type something like that up and it screw people over. It's disgusting. With that being said, because the seller was only one older woman, I think she's in her 50s or some shit, I don't know, um, because it was one older woman and they didn't know where she worked, but it was assumed that she didn't make a ton of money, we most likely wouldn't get a dime from her if we sued her and that was something that we were told by multiple lawyers that you probably will not get money off of her so the thing that we were left with was we could sue to put a lien on their house and we would win that and that would basically make it so that they would never be able to move out of that house without us getting profit off of it but the issue that we were coming across there's two of them and this is where we had like a huge life changing decision that we had to make. The house that they moved into was brand new and the odds of them selling it, especially after there being a lien put on it, was very unlikely. So it would be unlikely that we ever even got a dime off of them. And the second problem was that the lawyer said that we could be spending upwards of 15 grand or more to even just do that. So we would be spending tens of thousands of dollars. And if we did choose to pursue this, we would have no money at all right now because Mark just lost his job. Upwards of $15,000 to put a lien on their property and we would probably never even see a dime. I mean, maybe one day when we were dead or something, like our kids would get it, something like that. But that was the most disappointing and frustrating thing. But we didn't immediately decide that we weren't gonna do that. There were a lot of other things that weren't as important that were kind of tied in with that. Like we were advised to remove all of my content that I had made about the situation. So basically what that would have meant and like I said, this isn't the biggest issue out of everything, but what that would have meant is that the videos that I've put up about the situation, I would have had to take them down and you guys would have had no idea where they went. People were donating to our GoFundMe and I would just rip these stories away from them and I wouldn't even be able to explain to you guys publicly why I had to take them down because I would have to go dead silent about our entire situation on all social media, on my channel, everywhere. I wouldn't be able to answer questions about where my videos went. I would have to ignore everything. And I was freaking out because my video got a lot more attention than I thought that it would. Like I had some of my favorite YouTubers find my video and like share it. It was crazy. Like I had never, my channel has never done this well in my life. And I would have to remove all of this content about it. And the thousands of you that have been invested in this story would not know where it went. And then the people that donated to us would think that we like lied and like took all your money and I wouldn't be able to tell you what we did with it. I wouldn't be able to show you guys that we upgraded our furniture, that we were able to get rid of everything that had flood damage and what we replaced it with. I wouldn't be able to talk about it. And that felt so, that was horrible. I knew deep down inside that the most important thing um, sadly, and I hope you guys aren't offended by me saying this, but ultimately anybody that's in a situation like this, the most important thing is making sure, you know, that you're okay and taking care of your well-being. So ultimately the most important thing would be to make the decision that best helped Mark and I out in this situation, even if that meant that I had to take the videos down and couldn't explain, um, where they went or why until the situation was resolved. Like if that was something that I had to do and risk you guys hating me and thinking things that weren't true or thinking that I stole from you or thinking that I lied or, you know, all the speculation that would probably happen. And like, it would have completely ruined my channel, I'm assuming, because everybody would have been rightfully angry at me. 
but it was something that I would have been willing a sacrifice I would have been willing to make. Uh, of course, as long as I was eventually, once the lawsuit was over, able to explain everything to you guys. But it was something that I was willing to do if it meant that we would get justice and that everything would work out right in the end. But after weighing all of the pros and cons and the stress and everything, and it was like, we're currently in the process of doing a short sale, which we got approved for it finally, by the way, that's like another thing. It's not sold, but we did get approved for the short sale. We do have an offer. I'll get into all that. But it's like, on top of all of the things that we're currently going through, Mark lost his job. So then we would have to put every single dime that we have, and it still wouldn't be enough to pay for this lawsuit that would go on for God only knows how long to probably never even get anything out of it. And we would have nothing left. We would have, I can't stress that enough. If I could show you guys my bank account, I would. You guys have donated and helped us out so much on GoFundMe. All of that GoFundMe money that you guys have donated us isn't enough for what we would have to put into this situation. I don't make enough for this. Mark hasn't been getting his unemployment. There's a lot of people that aren't getting their unemployment checks right now and that they're like backlogged and Mark is one of them. He's not getting any money. So I'm the only one making money to pay for our life and everything that we're currently going through and all of that would be gone and everything that you guys donated would be gone and it still wouldn't have been enough. You guys know where this is going, but don't think it was easy. It was the hardest decision. It was not an easy decision. It was not something that we wanted to decide. We wanted this to end with the people who sold us this house getting what they deserved. That was ultimately what we wanted. And if that meant just putting a lien on their house and them having to go through the stresses of the legal situation like we had to, then it would be worth it. But to know that you could put all of this into it, get nothing. You'd have to take all of your videos down about it. And there still most likely would be nothing out of it. I can't express to you guys that feeling. I don't know why the legal system is this way. I don't know why it seems like the legal system is there to protect businesses and basically everyone who scams people more than the people who don't have bad intentions. Like, I don't know why it's like that. I have been so nervous to do this video because I don't want anybody to be disappointed, but I know that there's gonna be people that have been invested in our story and what we've gone through that are gonna be mad. And I don't want anybody to be mad at us for the decision that we chose to make I hope you guys understand. Um, it is a completely disappointing outcome. It is not what we wanted. And it wasn't even about getting all of this money out of them. It was just about us not having to put more money into them and get nothing back and them just get to go live their lives and not even think twice about what they put other people through. Like we just wanted, we wanted justice. We wanted to end this story with justice, and that's not what happened. Um, so Mark made the phone call to the lawyer, and he told him that our decision was to not pursue it. And the lawyer said that that was the best decision, that that was something that he couldn't advise us to do, obviously, but that that was the best decision. And he actually told Mark on the phone not to feel bad, not to feel like we did something wrong, and that we were in a really, really shitty position. And that is something that a, you know, a intelligent lawyer that's been doing this for decades told us. And it, it was in a sense reassuring to hear him say, you know, don't feel like you did something wrong and that you guys were just, you were just royally screwed in all areas. But when I say this is not the video that I wanted to film, this is not the story I wanted to tell, I mean it. It makes me unbelievably angry that there are no repercussions to the seller. There's no repercussions to her there's no repercussions to her son, to her daughter-in-law. 
There's no repercussions to anyone that lived in that home. We have thought about writing them a letter. Um, we've thought about so many things because we have a lot of things we would like to say to them, but I've heard things that they've said and I've seen things that they've done like deleting and blocking people that are mutual friends, shit like that. Like we've seen it and it's frustrating to see people especially people that want to post like Bible verses and shit on their Facebook, that makes me madder than anything because you want to sit there and you want to preach to your Facebook friends and you want to give them Bible verses about loving one another and what a great person you are and not one fucking person on your Facebook knows what you did to us. It's disgusting, it's enraging, and I wish that everything panned out in a way that worked out in our favor and ended up with them being fucked. But the legal system doesn't work like that, and all the advice that we got is what we got, and when you meet with three lawyers and you keep hearing the same thing, like, what are we supposed to do? Like keep going and meeting with more and more lawyers to hear the same thing. You're gonna be out of all of your money and negative in your bank account and you're gonna be in a lawsuit with these idiots for years probably and like always have that hanging over your head. Like we just want it like gone. Like we just, we don't wanna think about it anymore. Like we want it out of our lives. I can't express that enough. I, like I told you guys at the beginning of this video, I'm getting anxious talking about it, but like we have like lasting effects on our mental health from this. Like currently we own two, two properties, which sounds great in theory, right? But it's not because we have the money to, it's because we had to get out of there. Like at that point of living in there, it would have been animal abuse and negligence to our pets to continue living in that house. I think that 80 to 90% of the comments on my video are telling us to sue the sellers. And I feel like I disappointed all of you. And I know it's not about that. I know it's not ultimately about anyone who didn't live in the home and didn't know what it was like. I know that it's not, but you guys did so much for us and sharing the video and getting everything out there, reaching out and giving advice and caring that it sucks to feel like you're filming something right now that is gonna disappoint the people that have been supporting you. I want you guys to know that Mark and I are okay. Um, even though he lost his job, we are making the best of it. It was fine when he, when he was laid off from his job when we were actually getting unemployment. But as you guys know, um, there's like a backlogging or something like that, so he hasn't gotten his unemployment for weeks. <laughs> Um, I am so incredibly thankful. It's like, it's like, it's, I, this is such a weird thing to say, but it was like divine timing that you guys started finding my channel and subscribing and watching my videos because you guys are helping me pay my bills and I don't know what we would be doing right now if my channel was in the situation that it was in. Um, when I first filmed that video, I don't know what the fuck we would be doing because we would We would have to be begging everywhere to not make like make us make payments on credit cards and bills and stuff because We wouldn't be able to pay for it And so I'm very thankful that in this time when he lost his job that we're we're okay And that's all thanks to you guys. I don't take that for granted and I don't say that lightly It is genuinely thanks to you guys and I want you to know that and I'm so sorry I'm getting like so emotional at the end of this video like I have to like Stream on twitch when this is over and I'm like getting all like emotional and shit but Thank you guys for watching and for listening and this isn't over I have a lot more things that I want to talk about and I do greatly want to apologize for taking so long to give you guys updates. There is truly no need for it to take me this long to do this. It's just so hard to talk about. I have been so nervous to film this. I have been so worried you guys are gonna get upset. I just, I hope that you guys understand that there was nothing else we could do and it sucks. And I don't know if we'll ever end up writing a letter to the sellers, but if they just so happen to watch this video, I just want you 
and everyone that lived in that home to know that you deserve to get sued. You don't deserve the house that you have. You don't deserve your fucking boat. You don't deserve the people in your life to think that you're great people. It doesn't matter how many posts your friends make about you on social media. You're not good people. You did something terrible. You had no remorse for it. None. And I could be an awful person and out every single one of you, but I'm not gonna do that because a lot of people are very angry and it would not be good for your safety for me to do that. And so I don't want anybody to be hurt or anything like that. So I would never do that. But you guys deserve to be sued for that. And had we been in a better financial situation and had the legal system not been set in place for fucked up people, you guys would have been sued. And we would have won. We were told that by numerous lawyers. You guys don't deserve what you currently have because of what you did. Maybe if you guys had some sort of remorse in you or you felt bad or you understood the capacity of what you did to our lives, maybe I would say you deserve a second chance. But at this point with the things that I've seen you guys do on the internet and the things that I've seen you guys say and how you have gaslit and manipulated the situation, you absolutely deserve to be sued. And I personally think at least the seller, the one that filled out that paperwork, deserves jail time for that. Lawyers told us you committed fraud. Fraud. Do you understand the severity of that? So the last thing I wanna say in this video to give you guys a little tiny update at where we are now. We just got approved for a short sale, which is amazing. The bank dragged that out like crazy, but we got approved and we only have to bring $108 to closing and it is going to be next month in September. As long as the buyer doesn't back out and everything works out great, the house will be sold next month. Please put the finger crossed emojis down below. Send good vibes down there. Literally just write good vibes and put this down there that everything works out great with that. It is someone who has been purchasing properties around Arkansas and renovating them and stuff like that. She is fully aware of all of the issues in it. She knows that it floods. She knows that it has mold. She knows everything. Like our realtor was amazing and she put everything in the description of the house that we asked her to put in there so she is fully aware she is getting the house at way less than what we paid for it but the bank is fortunately forgiving our loan we are going to have to bring hundred and eight dollars to closing but that's so much better than the 34 plus grand it would have cost us to fix it and I also wanted to say this um, about the city of Salem Springs because I know that they are still <laughs> getting messages and comments from you guys. So I just wanted to say this. They went out there and they installed a cement thing going along the side of the property that is supposed to pull the water into the cul-de-sac and they, you know, did some more work in the backyard. We don't know if it works yet because we don't live in there. We've been back to the house a couple of times and I haven't noticed any flooding issues. It didn't appear that it has flooded, but they did go out of the backyard as they promised and do more work into it. I will show you guys pictures in my next update video for what it currently looks like and what they installed and what they're working on. And hopefully I can let you guys know if it worked or not. I'm not sure if it did at this point. Cause like I said, we don't live in there. So we're not able to watch it when it rains. We do want to go over there when it rains to see how it's draining and everything. But the person who installed it said that the last time it rained, he went there and it looked like it was working out just fine. But obviously, you need to be in the home to see how it's working because the water comes inside of the house and looking at it from the outside, you probably wouldn't know that. We do need to go keep an eye on that. So I will definitely keep you guys updated, but I wanted to let you know that Salem Springs, they are trying to right their wrong and that's all that you can do. So thank you guys so much for listening to this video. I really appreciate you guys following this story. If you guys are interested in something that's more fun and you guys would like to watch me live and get to chat with me, I started streaming on Twitch again. It's really, really fun. And I know that a lot of people, you know, that are on YouTube, maybe don't use Twitch or don't know what it is, but you guys should totally make an account and come chat with me. It's really cool 
cool because I get to live stream playing games and talk to you guys and stuff like that and I'm gonna get a schedule really soon I think so that it can be like set in place I love playing games I'm not the greatest at it but I really enjoy it so I love hanging out with you guys over there it's always so much fun and if you guys would like to be part of that I'll link my twitch down below you should definitely go follow it so I'm gonna have another video really soon going more into depth to all of that and I also want to talk about this is something that I feel like is very important for people to understand what people go through mentally in their lives after living in a house with flooding because unfortunately people all over America, all over the world, struggle with flooding and struggle with some sort of problem inside of their home that is affecting their health and it's not something that people talk about enough so I want to do a video all about that so there's still going to be more about the house and I also have other things coming up too. I have a really fun video I'm going to do next. We're going to take a little break from the house stuff. Well, kind of. It's going to be, an, it's going to have to do with the house you guys will see. You guys just wait on that. It's coming, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. I love you all so much, and once again, thank you so much to all of you. I wish I could hug every single one of you, but we'll wait till the coronavirus is over. <laughs> but after that, I would love to hug every single one of you for your love and support, so thank you guys so much. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. I love you all, and I will see you in the next one.